Gummy baby beer, sin of vagina pigs. 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 See, you can't even say it. Got fucking fucked up. Gummy baby beer, sin of vagina pigs. Gummy baby beer, sin of vagina pigs. We are getting ready to play some fucking rock band four. We got a Boston butt smoking on the fucking grill. It's and Gummy like baby doing stuff. <laughs> It's like, like I, can't even, I can't even say it's it now. It's 10 right? o'clock at night. I've, I've already had, I call them brown Ukrainians. Chocolate milk with fucking vodka thrown in them. Brown bombers. bombers. That's so fucking nice. brown ukes, man. Brown bombers. I've had like eight. Am, and, I, in the, am I in the frame? Uh, yes, you are, sir. Are you in the frame? No. Um, nah, nah. Uh, now... We just got finished listening to the brand new Trans Siberian Orchestra album, Letters from the Labyrinth. And actually, I thought it was called Letters from Jesus. I just found out that this album was coming out like two weeks ago. <laughs> I just randomly was looking at them on Wikipedia and I see this about, oh, letter, Letters from the Labyrinth, uh, fucking Friday 13th, uh, November, oh, I'm like, what? what? Oh, and so, so oh. check this out, people. I'm going to try to fucking yeah. move He's over gonna here. He's going to try. Don't well, break your camera in the process, sir. All right. There's a drum set in this, this is a band that have always had the coolest fucking album covers to me. Like, look at this. You got a guy. Zach calls him Jesus Moses. Mojis. Mojis. <laughs> he let he just let some eagle fly out, holding some letters. Why did it say audio slave? He's got this little what wolf dude, Order. little wolf Order. guy. Order. They've got the coolest Order. fucking album covers. Order. And then. Order. What did I do? The back looks really cool. You got like a ship in the little distance, some lightning. What are you talking about money. Then you open it up, no, and you've got you more pictures of inside what? the labyrinth. And then you that's got this the first game. TSO. That's, that's way more and I'm guessing like a phoenix, and then like an a, a ice bird, a blue bird. I don't about. fucking know. Beautiful well. Disaster. Seventeen dollars for fucking. You go in the lyric American book. Idiot? TSO has Fuck had you, some amazing. I th I think after one, once they it. did and the Rock Lost Christmas Eve, disaster. their packaging and has gotten down. more elaborate, and oh, yeah. this is really cool. You get down, yeah. Little That's stories exactly about each the, song. Uh, you get all the lyrics, more Rock cool Smith pictures. Part. But then you get this King Rurik fucking comic book of him like resurrecting in present day um, and fucking it's so fucking cool like it's fucking really really cool and yeah I've already read the comic you know it's alright and then more lyrics and story time more little picture and yeah lyrics 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 that's pretty much it I mean that's that's TSO shit well, we just finished listening to it, and uh, what did you think, Zach? I like the band. At first, the beginning of the album, alright, you say it was kind of slow and boring. In my opinion, it... I wouldn't say slow and boring. Oh, well, you said it was it. slow, so slow kind of kind of translates to boring to the, the simple-minded people. So that's what I'm saying. Not to be, an, I'm not trying to be an asshole. I'm just throwing it out there. Um, but I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> no, I did not though. Um, <laughs> Batman. <laughs> Shut up! You gotta pay for it. <laughs> Beef beans. <laughs> Beef beans. <laughs> um, no, the first part, or at least the first three to four tracks, reminded me of 
Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Like, the, the typical shit that you would hear on a radio during Christmas time, or a... A radio track, or... An advertisement Very tracks. orchestral meets heavy metal yeah. guitar solos. It's pretty much the same structure of the same shit I've heard for the last ten years. Not bad. It's cool. I love these guys, and it's cool to hear new shit, but the beginning sounded like that. And then I kind of stopped paying attention. Weed and vagina pics. Shut up. That's totally not what happened. No, it's a picture of a roast beef sandwich that somebody stuck an M80 in. Pa! Well, well, apparently it had to... <clears throat> so what, what, baby. what did you think, Josh? <laughs> that, that thing looked like it needed to have some lips cut off. Oh, um, we're not talking about that anymore. Talking about the album. <laughs> <laughs> snip, snip. <laughs> Zing. Nah, it was, okay. it was okay. It's not one of the best albums they've had. But yeah. the beginning, the, beginning the, the first half that was more of their orchestral stuff, I wasn't too, I didn't really like their power ballad music in there. That, ugh, too weak. Didn't sound like, it just sounded like any generic power ballad 80s hair metal band. It just, and then that last song, I was like, what the fuck? Really, that with, was garbage. With Lizzie man. Hale. They just need to stick to the classical Christmas, classic music shit, metal. That's best. But it's still not a bad album. It's just, it wasn't my cup of tea. The, I love the album. Start to finish, I love it. Now, the funny thing about this is next to their five-track EP, uh, Dream of Fireflies, this is the shortest full Trans-Siberian Orchestra album out there. None of the songs even surpass five minutes, which is very different for, for TSO because I'm used to shit being five to ten minutes so. long. And, uh... It's so, so, so! And, uh... Oh, you get, you downloaded... I can say that this, uh, this album is much more, I guess... Much more focused. They kind of stick to the point. the uh, The first five tracks are mainly instrumental. Oh, I mean, you get the first track, "Time and Distance." You get really cool choir vocals, which the this band is amazing for. And then you get "Madness and Men," and then "Prometheus." I think "Prometheus" is the one that has some lyrics toward the end of the song. Then Mountain Labyrinth, King Rurik, and to. Prince Igor uh, are completely instrumental. So, like, the first it's half of this scary. album is instrumental it's stuff. Smart. Then you Space. go into uh, The Night Conceives, which uh, is a really rocking track that, uh, God, I always forget her name, but she sings on a lot of their stuff. It's the most aggressive song or singing that she's ever done. It's very... Oh, very rocky, he very the heavy. Then it goes into probably my least favorite song on the album, Forget About the Blame. Now, the thing is, Trans-Siberian Orchestra, I call it the mandatory power ballad. Yes. Every album... The obligatory power ballad. Every album by TSO has rockin' orchestral stuff mixed with heavy metal and prog and... Just some of the most amazing guitar solos I've ever heard in my life. Up there with Joe Satriani, up there with fucking Eric Johnson and Yingve Malmsteen. But then you'll get this, these sappy ass, I mean sappy, I mean really fucking sappy fucking power <laughs> ballads. Every album has those and... It's the one you always skip. But the thing is, is I don't normally skip them. I kind of like them. Uh, they are my least favorite songs by the band because they're a little more structured to uh, your normal kind of rock and roll, heavy metal, power ballad style. They are very, very simple compared to 
TSO standards uh, because they are some amazing fucking instrumentalists. They're some amazing, just amazing songwriters and storytellers and musicianists. Musicianists? And Musicians. And Musicians. <laughs> what is I, a musicianist? A musicianist is a man an artist who plays an instrument. There That's a musician. I've made a new word. Musicianist. Okay. Musicianist. So anyway, when they when you hear rockin' ash tracks and then get to one of those ballads that use the four chord pop song that you hear in that journey. Oh my track. god, the whole, time, the whole time that was playing, I was thinking, wow, this sounds like every other song I've ever heard. Yeah, you it's the exact same guitar riff. The ballad? From, yeah, yeah, forget about the blame. It's the exact same guitar riff from, um, what do you call it? Damn It from Blink-182. Uh, what else, man? That uh, dun, it, it's dun, almost the same dun, rhythm dun, Adam song. Dun. Fucking, Blink-182 does I it, mean, Green Day does it. Everyone does Austin it. Austin does it. It is, did it. it is the most popular ballad riff. Four chords. Four chord pop song. Um, and... I mean, pretty much. It's, 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 it's fucking it's, canon, dude. It's, it's, it's fucking... It's canon, metal. minus a couple notes. Um, but you can still sing canon to it. So it's still canon. I need a lighter. I need a lighter. Oh, wow, your Zippo's actually out. Oh, it's not out. My flint just crapped out on me. Wait, Off me hell pigs. So yeah. it's pretty much offspring. Um, and it's not a bad song. Forget About the Blame is a pretty touching track, I mean, for what it is. I mean, I don't skip it when I listen to it. I mean, I like those notes. I mean, don't get me wrong. The thing that saves it, though, is the guitar solo. I mean, that's the thing. When you yeah. get to those familiar fucking notes... The guitar solo normally saves it, and thankfully it does. The lyrics suck. The lyrics suck. It's like, it ain't about the love. They sound like a country song. Na, 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 it sounds like a country ballad song. Forget about the bland. It just reminds me of, like, Poison. She got them short skirt, blue it jeans. It reminds the me of... Cowboy boots. It reminds me of Nelson. Chevrolet. It reminds me of... Fucking dare I say, even Guns N' Roses power ballad stuff. <laughs> um, Fuck you, Axel. But. Why do you need such powerful weapons? The thing that pisses me off about zombies. the song the most <laughs> is the fact that there is <laughs> a not? bonus track. Merc. There is a That's bonus right. track on this album. It's, like it's the exact album. same song. Forget about the blame. The original version is Sun version. Forget about the blame, sun version. Bonus track, forget about the blame, moon version. The only difference, the only difference is instead of the guy singing, you have Lizzie Hale from Hailstorm singing on it. I don't know shit about Hailstorm. So Hail is it Hailstorm or Ailstorm? Ailstorm is the pirate band. Hailstorm is like the mainstream Wow, they should about. not have a band with a name so damn. One has an H and one doesn't That's have That's what I'm saying, dude. I'm about to tell you guys a story here. When I first started listening to Ale Storm, I was telling our buddy Charlie about him. Like, dude, you gotta check out Ale Storm. They're badass. Then he hits me up a couple weeks later, talking about, dude, you told me to check out Hail Storm. They fucking suck. I'm like, what are you talking about, dude? They're a badass pirate band. He's like, no, dude. They're like fucking mainstream flyleaf rock. I'm like, nah, dude, they're a fucking Scottish pirate band. He was looking up. And, and he's going to say, are, are we talking about the same thing? I said, Hailstorm, like the beer. He goes, no, I'm talking about Hailstorm, like the ice rain. I'm like, <laughs> oh, my God. So we live in a world where our two never bands sound so similar in name that you have to clarify if what kind know. of rain it would be? It's an ale storm. No, it's a hailstorm. Nice. And 
I've never heard a hailstorm song, so yes, her version. Yes, you have. I am so. Sure if if I have, I don't know like that it's them. You you went to my house and you heard the Lindsey Sterling album, so you kind of heard a hailstorm album or a hailstorm song. I, have I mean, no she's on that idea. song. She yeah. sings in hailstorm. Well, it really doesn't matter what the band sounds like when the singer sucks. Well, I'm sorry, is, your band can yeah, be amazing. Singer, singer and if your front good. man sucks ass at Shit. singing, to you me, bring, it brings you down. Yeah, so that's my thing, is the bonus track is exactly oh, shit, the same. I'm sorry, what are you drinking out of that? This Forget About the Blame is exactly the same as the other version, only okay. Lizzie Hale is Damn. singing on it. Well, I don't know shit about some Hailstorm. I'm sorry. So I don't know where her vocal range is. She's it's decent. It's not that amazing, it's, it's rock music. She's it's decent music. on it's the song. Music. But I think that they kind of underutilize her uh, on a cheap ass ballad that you already hear seven tracks before. Um, but really, those are some of my only complaints because after that, after that, you run into uh, "Not Dead Yet," which is a really rock. Yeah, I like Prometheus song. though. I like yeah, that Prometheus song. Prometheus kicked ass, man. I mean, I don't remember the name of the song, but that one, when it came on, I was like, hey, that's kind of cool. I gotta read, I gotta know what that's called. So I looked at it, and it was called Prometheus, and I was like, I'm gonna remember that. Yeah. And I did. I remember Prometheus and Bob. Prometheus and Bob, bro. I love that shit. Um, you fucking remember. Kablam. Kablam. Uh, well, then you get to That's a show that needs to be on Netflix or Hulu. Kablam was awesome, dude. That was like one of the last Nickelodeon cartoons that I ever cared about. That was, yeah, really. Like, everyone was going crazy over Hey Arnold and Alex Mack and all those other stupid fucking shows. Man, I like that, hard, real that were like Real life and teenagers and shit. I didn't care about that. I wanted to see weird shit. I liked My Brother and Me. Uh, Alex Mack, Clarissa Explains It All, I liked Salucha Shorts, and I loved Are You Afraid of the Dark, and I really <coughs> loved Pete and Pete. Those are the only, like, live-action Nick shows I liked. Maybe well, send a question. I can't anyway, wait. you go into Not Dead Yet, which is awesome, which is awesome. but then you go Listen, into, this is three tracks in a row of, of a female ballad. You've got Past Tomorrow, Stay, and Not the Same. They kind of blend into each other. They're all good, but they kind of blend into each other. After that, you got Who Am I, which it's all right, and then Lullaby Night, which I love classical music, but I can never pinpoint the artist to the song. I'm not like one of those connoisseurs. I'm going to be one of those cliche motherfuckers and say my favorite classical song of all time is Rhapsody in Blue. And that's technically like jazz classical. I mean, I I love classical music, but I am not educated in classical music, and uh, that's something that I need to explore more because technically classical music was heavy metal and prog rock before electricity. I'll save that when we get ready. I got there's a badass song in here you're gonna love. So anyway, anyway. Um, this album, after talking about the songs, the album as a whole, alright, this is the first TSO album in six years. 2009's Night Castle was a mind-blowing fucking journey that, that had amazing ballads. Amazing classical songs. You got Takata. You've oh, got the fucking dun 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 dun. You've got amazing songs like Epiphany. Epiphany is like my favorite song on there. Fucking ten minutes of sure fucking rock opera gold, dude. And. Night Castle was a double disc extravaganza. All right, Night Castle was their first album in five years. The album before that was 2004's 
The Lost Christmas Eve, which to me is like my number two TSO album. I'll tell you my number one in a minute. But that that is their best Christmas album, and it's their best just rocking album. Of it, it is awesome rock and roll mm -hmm. meets classical and prog, and it's it's it's, it's flawless as shit. So you get an album like Night Castle that yeah I'll say it's pretty self indulgent, but it's a good self indulgent. It's the kind of album that. You you have to devote two hours to listen to. Yeah, that is a long fucking album. Because, I mean, you've got, like, what? Almost 30 fucking tracks. Yeah. And a lot. There, there's barely a track that certain... Under five minutes. Like, almost um, five. Yeah. Five, six, seven five, minutes Five, six, each. seven, eight, and ten minutes long. Because most of the songs have, like, two or three parts. Mm -hmm. Like Epiphany. Epiphany is, like, close to eleven. And, but it's an album that, from especially a double disc album, from start to finish, is completely flawless. From start to fucking finish. If you can devote that two hours to listen to Night Castle, you are in for a fucking ride. That's a blown up. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Dude, that's nasty! <laughs> Dude, that, oh, Whitney asked me to send them to her. Oh my God, man! What the fuck is wrong with her vagina? We need a vagina fix. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's okay, Yoda. Night Shut Castle up. is one of those albums. If you can devote your two hours to listen to this, you will not be disappointed. Never. Yeah, there's some songs that are not as good as others, but it's part of the experience. Now, this album is a Sequel to Night Castle, but it's not a full rock opera concept <laughs> album like their past albums. Every TSO is a full on rock opera, complete self contained story. This one sort of just follows the stories and messages from Night Castle. Now, does, does that hurt the album? Not necessarily, because the stories are very focused, um, the songs are very focused, the music is very focused, uh, everything does what it needs to do at the exact certain time signature. Zambies. And like I said, the very first half of the album, maybe not even the first half, I mean you've got 14 tracks, 15 if you count that bonus track. Oh damn, that's... That's the shortest TSO oh, album. Okay, dude. damn. Yeah. Because normally they're yeah, they're, they're pushing that. eighteen like the, or the more. The bonus man. track is the last track, and there's only fifteen songs, so there's really only fourteen. Yeah. Fuck, that sucks. It's, it's only it's, an it's, hour long. That's that's it's less. the first the first disc of most of their sets. I would right? normally say I would normally say that's a disappointment. Well, where does this go? It's not a disappointment because the music is so good. Well, it's good. still good. It's just, it's not, there's it's, just traditional music. Uh, it's an music. easy listen. It's probably one of the easiest albums to listen to. It's not a there. Christmas so album. Is it's it Christmas one that you would grab before others? No. It is not one I will grab before others. Uh, right now, I've listened to the fuck out of it. Since yesterday. Um, yeah, I've, I've played it several fucking times. And... Uh, Beethoven's Last Night and Nightcast would be the ones you always go to. Yeah, my my number one favorite is Beethoven's, Beethoven's Last Night because the everything about that album is flawless. The oh, ballads, that oh, it's like what almost twenty something tracks. I think it's over two and a half, almost almost two hours, two maybe two an hour and a half almost. It, it's long. Two, it's two two push it. No, no, it's one disc. I do have the two disc version, which is uh, yeah, the version released. One CD goes to an hour and a half, almost an hour and a half. Then it should probably be about seventy minutes. About about seventy yeah. minutes. Yeah. Okay, but so that's the, about it between the Baron and me. Right? Unless you get yeah. Let's get the double. But disc it set. is one of the greatest rock operas no, I've ever heard in my life. It's about fifty six. Yeah. Because. You have different voices for each character during the songs. You have she said a question mark. an amazing, just an amazing fictional story on the account of the last night of Beethoven's life. And just the arrangements they do with Mozart 
and Beethoven songs. To me, I will say they they do Beethoven and Mozart better than Beethoven and Mozart. And they it's do what the they most, do. It's and one of the most heartfelt deep. TSO albums out there. And that's why I say Last Christmas Eve is my number two because that, among all their other albums, especially the Christmas albums, that is their most heartfelt Christmas album. My number three would be Night Castle because that is probably the most heartfelt musically. This one will be my number four because it's another heartfelt I'm music just to album. Out if you can see it on the camera. So when you have all right, the have first we even looked at it. Yeah, the first five tracks is. are mostly oh, instrumental. Hey, you get choir vocals on the first can. track. On Prometheus, you it's get a couple lyrics at the end, and the rest of it's instrumental until you get to the night conceits. Okay. Flawless. Then when okay. you get to the night conceives, everything sort of tones down a bit. <laughs> everything sort of gets more structured and, and, and more not... I'm not saying radio friendly in a negative light. I'm just saying very focused and structured radio friendly. You're not going to hear normal trans type or an orchestra. Yeah, right? I mean, for real. The only thing on the radio no, you you're going to hear by them hear their is their, their ballads. You know, those power you're ballads you're going to hear that fucking Hark Hear the Bells fucking song and like that's it. Yeah, that, and even then, I don't want to hear it yet. Not until fucking Thanksgiving. Yeah, that and Christmas Cannon. <laughs> their little yeah. Christmas Cannon are the only ones they ever really play on the radio here at Christmas time on Sunny 100. And, you know, I I haven't even been to Sunny 100 yet on the radio yet. Are they playing Christmas music? Yeah, they start on November 1st. Yeah, I know, but are they right now? Yeah, I turned it on, what, the other day when me and Stock were, like, getting to Dale talking Yeah, they're already or, playing Christmas. They started playing Christmas music the day after I haven't even heard it yet. Like, I don't even feel Christmas. It's always like the I same yeah, I five understand. songs with a hundred different yeah. versions. I know, it's always the same five and a hundred different that variations. That awful but... Paul McCartney Christmas song, that awful John Lennon and Yoko Ono Christmas song, the awful Wait. Mariah Carey Christmas song. You know what's funny? And then the awesome fucking Dean Martin shit. I love that. Hey, we gotta do a CeeLo Green Christmas. We should. We should. Because it's this year. We and it, I just changed the camera angle. Uh, did you? Yeah. Uh, no. Is it playing? Did oh, you can no, hear we, music coming out of there, Zach? So, anyway. There's a hit song in here. You gotta hear Travis when you get a chance. Anyway, uh, I think the album is damn good. It's worth the fucking six year Rainbow. wait. But I don't think it is as good as Night Castle. I think it's. I think it's good enough by TSO standards. Like, it's definitely a contender for the 13 badass albums of 2015. Uh, where on the list it will be, I have yet to determine. Yeah, it might be kind of more in the middle. Maybe low, the middle. Lower middle, because there, there's too, too good of stuff that came out this year. Um, but, I mean, I still... I can't get enough of those first five tracks. And then, um, what is it? I'm Not Dead. I can't get enough of those. And those tracks alone are enough to make it <clears throat> number five of the year, at least. Because um, I can... I, every album of theirs, you know, they're, they're sappy ballads. I can forget about. Their sappy ballads are either good or too goddamn sappy and on here the o the only one that gets too goddamn sappy is forget about the blame and the only thing that makes it worse is you have to hear it twice um and that to me is the only downside of this record is that song even though like I said, the solo fucking saves it. The solo makes it worth listening to. It's like November Rain. Alright, November Rain. Everybody's gonna bitch about this because, yeah, November Rain is a badass, iconic GNR song. 
but November Rain is boring as a motherfucker for like the first 10 to 11 fucking minutes. You're only there to hear the badass ending of the song with Slash and his new, 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 and the fucking Don't you learn that you need somebody? Don't you learn that you need someone? That's a badass song, man. Yeah, until that part. You know what I mean? Not, uh, not until that part. Because the rest of the song is boring as fuck. Dude, there's like seven solos in that song. Where's my lighter? But you that's the it. best one. Give me my lighter. That's the best Give me my one. Um, <laughs> hey! Oh my god, are you serious? I swear I put it back over there's here. There's a silver lighter! I swear I put it back over here. <coughs> Come on, oh Stumpy. Oh my god, I said earlier I have a. Oh, his I legs are gone. Use it. I thought you were. Being like the grace of God and saying, I'm like, I got oh. it, don't worry. I, I did answer, no, I didn't touch it. I did but yeah, the, their ba this ballad is, thankfully, it's not a 12 minute track. It's only about close to five minutes. Um, but it's, it's, it's like I said, my point is, is you're there for the solo. So um, apparently, I had to go pee and I left it in the bathroom. There you go. Zach left his lighter in the back. Problem bag. solved! Zach loses shit in the most easiest places to find. He lost his keys earlier. In my and jacket. They were in his fucking jacket. We spent like 30 minutes looking for that shit. Now. Am I proud of it? No, but hey, we had good experiences. Trying to find keys in a lighter. And then I went home, and now we get to experience some cool shit. We play a new Call of Duty. The Nickelback of video games. <laughs> this one's actually good. This one's actually. I'm enjoying this one. This is the better one. I didn't like it. It's Advanced still Warfare Nickelback of video games. Um, now, now back to what I was saying. You, for for get the blame. You're there for the solo. Just like you are for November Rain. Uh, there, are, to me, there are better songs on Use Your Illusion One than November Rain. I mean, come on, people. I love their fucking version of. Uh, Live and let die and fucking rocks, bro. Uh, so, what would you rank this album, Zach? How many snowflakes and Christmas trees do you give this album? How many snowballs? Okay. From a scale <coughs> from one to ten, blown out vagina. If you got four vagina pictures, and three tit pictures. One camel tip. And a cock eye. Eight. I give this album a two. Wow, that's kind of low. Two out of ten. That's what I say if you got that. Oh, so then what do you give it? I'm saying if you got three, three blown out vagina pictures. And a cock eye. And no, three, three blown, four blown out vagina pictures. Three boob pictures. Three boob, boob pictures. And a cock eye. And a cock eye selfie. I'd give it a two. Yeah. But. Let's see a lighter. If you were. He's been sitting here for a long time wanting to smoke. <laughs> if you were okay. It is not. If none of that has been going on in the record, then I'd give it an eight. So you give it an eight? I give it three vag pictures out of eight. If you have vag pictures. Zach saying it's a I... seven out of ten. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about my math, I'm the worst Asian ever. <laughs> so what do you give it, Josh? I seven out of ten. Seven out of ten. I like, I like why are you trying to fucking ask what my score is on this goddamn thing? The fact that, one, there's no Christmas music on it. That's the first time I've had was no Christmas music. Well, that's the thing. Well. There's three albums. This is their third non-Christmas album. Well, okay. Some of the ones didn't have a Christmas song. Two and song. a half. Two and a half. Because check this out, people. Night Castle had like, what, one, two Christmas songs? You had Tracers and The Nut Rocker. So, yeah, there you go. Beethoven, yeah. no Christmas. Yeah, I'm sitting this here album, text no that's Christmas. Whitney. That's Whitney. I know. I that's so, not yeah. Whitney. I know. 
This album to me, would you give it seven? Say seven out of ten. Acceptable. It's good. You should. You can. It's not. That's better. That's less better than average. You should be able. You should listen to it. This album, I yeah. will give it. <laughs> you just want to laugh at it. It's like, oh. Um. <laughs> I gotta pour my brown Ukrainian. That is the bee hole because it does bee work. What, she just sent you more butthole pictures? No, no. <laughs> you know, music could be all you prefer to. No, I had a last thing I got was a question mark. We are awful, man. No, that's an awful vagina. That That is awful. Is, oh my god. It's awful for it to happen. So, the rating I give this album. <laughs> We're too personal on this show. That's why no, no one will pick us up. Nobody knows whose vagina we're talking about. It doesn't matter, but they know it's, it's real. A we were told in the comments that we bring up Kaylin and Mike a lot. Did we really? Who said that? I think it might have been our buddy John. <coughs> okay. Well, I mean, we bring up Mike and John, the rustic reviewer, man. That's probably you, dude. You probably bring up Mike I and fucking do. Because I do. I do, because I, I have a... I have a fucking brain tumor memory that fucking, like, nobody should have that, like... He doesn't have a filter when things come out of his mouth. I don't, especially when I'm drinking. Yeah, and he's always was, drinking when he does one of these. So. This, this was like, three years ago. No, this was five years ago. You'd be like... I'd be so Losing your off. socks and shit. Not even three years ago. It's almost year like ago. you got a tolerance. It's not um, just a year ago he was still doing that. I'm, I'm still doing. He's it. not hammering back. Sometimes no, he's not. He's not. You notice he's not hammering back glasses of wine. No, I'm hammering oh, yeah. back. I've probably. He's you know, sipping you know, on I've had he's eight. Not chugging those like he chugged I've wine. had eight or nine, maybe ten brown Ukrainians. All right, and That's that a, the amount of vodka I put in these, you know, you know, you know, you know, I've yeah. probably had like. 15 shots of vodka. Hey. Huh. Okay. That's enough. Trademark. Um. Now to the rating. Um. I, I give this album. You done? An 8.5. No. And that is because, uh, you know what? No, I'm doing it first, Josh. Doing right. it first. I am recanting. I am recanting that 8.5. I'm not comfortable with that 8.5. You don't do points around here. Whole numbers only. I'm giving it. Whole numbers or vagina pictures? I'm giving it a 9.5. Oh, you say it's perfect. It is a flawless album, except. Well, a flawless album Except that has one that you don't like that should be an eight. I'm that's sorry. The, that's the thing. That's the thing. No, that's the thing. That's the thing. I'm about to say it. It's a 9.5 because it's flawless except for Forget About the Blame. But since the solo fucking saves that song. Oh, the solo saved it. Yeah. The fucking solo saves that goddamn song. I will forever listen to it. There you go. What? Even the Lindsay Hale version at the end of the fucking album. I will listen to it because of the solo and the slight difference in the vocals. Right. 9.5 TSO we gave you Letters of the Labyrinth. Scores. And I'm sorry, people. All right, today I just got the Black Sabbath Paranoid Vinyl Me Please album. I know we're now we are two Vinyl Me Please reviews behind. But it's because... It's Christmas! My, my job, I work at a factory, Christmas. so Thanksgiving to Christmas, you're getting the fuck out of there early because Walmart isn't buying cases. We are, our numbers have dropped. Uh, we've been on, we're going, I'm going out Don't a tell shitload of vacations. Stop. And so I haven't had Cut. enough money. I haven't had enough money to buy all the alcohol ingredients that I need to buy. And so I'm going to try in the next month. You might see another one after Christmas. We're going to fucking just boom, 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 knock them all out. But this year, uh, I, I apologize for, for the shitty, the very shitty um, 
way I have kept up with our main show, the show that Bloody Chuckle Studios is all about, as far as shows go. I apologize for the very shitty upkeep of, upkeep of Monster from the Studio. Last year there was a big resurgence of the show. There's always been gaps, um, but last year I started to feel like boom, 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 I can knock these out. But then after I started working for this factory, um, yes. Especially you started working night shit, that's what oh, I yes, said. Night shit, started working a little second harder. Shift. When, when oh, this motherfucker goes to work at 4 o'clock and everyone else gets yeah, off to work I, at 4 o'clock. I don't get off till like 2. It's a little different, like we all now, have to get together on the weekend, so it's fucked. Unless you now, guys want to give us money so we don't have to work. Patreon, that would be awesome. we're on Patreon, yeah. give us money. But, I apologize for the very shitty upkeep. I will send you pictures of my dick. I, I hate the fact, I hate the fact that the Halloween episode No, I'm on. Was... Yeah. What? I'll send you a picture He's of my dick <coughs> for a dollar. If you want a picture of Zach's dick. Well, we'll have to put that in the Patreon. Yes, uh, a picture <laughs> of Zach's dick in any angle you please. Um, but it has one to of the classy. Patreon rewards will be changed to Zach's dick. Um, yeah, yeah. If you pay enough money in the Patreon thing, you get a picture of Zach's dick. Fifty cents a month. Okay, you guys lost it. <laughs> okay, well, can we say Travis? But back to what I was saying. Um, I apologize for the very shitty upkeep. I hate the fact that the Halloween episode was only one this year when we did three last year. I really hate the fact that the Halloween episode was the very first one since March when we did the final new metal no, review. No, and it sucks. I wasn't here. That, that was sick. supposed to be out. out. The the that one was supposed to be out um, last summer. Actually, well, it was yeah, actually supposed to be out because I had, before the Christmas or before the Halloween episode. Because what didn't happened get around was to it. I had recorded all of my monster scenes. At the same time, I recorded all the monster scenes for the Corn and P.O.D. episode, but when it got to September, I had such high ambitions for Halloween. I mean, what, five Halloween audio you theories? You did a lot of Halloween Three shit. monster episodes. I was like, I started writing those in what, the, the end of August? Because I was like, I need to pump we this out We started filming those Halloween things in we August. Started, no, we September. September, September yeah. Okay. We started filming the Halloween stuff Because that's why I kept saying it, um, it's totally October. Yeah, because it wasn't October when we were doing them. Um, I was just throwing that So, I mean, I'm, I really apologize for that. And we've been pumping out these first listens just to give you guys something to watch while I'm lazy. And, it's uh, not being lazy. It's I mean, yeah, it's not being lazy, but then it is also you, being lazy because... It's not being lazy because you have a lot of fucking shit going on. Hey, people have lives. Fuck you, YouTube, and viewers that don't appreciate the shit that we give you. Yeah, Fuck I mean, off, no, 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 this shit is free. No, no, no. This would be better if we were doing this live. I feel now, awesome. I know, that's what I'm saying. Like, we need to do one of these things live on PlayStation or Xbox one night. So back to my original point. You should. What is this, the fourth You got a year? camera? This is the what? Uh, third. Uh, what is this? The fourth year, y'all? Third. 2012. Third. So, wow, what is that? Third fucking third. year? It's me, second You've year. You've only been doing this three years, so yeah, it's like the same year. Your very first appearance on camera was that Marilyn Manson review. And but before that, you were doing the, uh, the, 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 the audio we theory. The audio theory. theory. Um, Right, I wasn't around for that. I didn't even know that was a thing. What? Y'all just did that on the fly. Oh, yeah. yeah we, were one, we, we were here. We were here. We were here. So we said, fuck it. Let's Stas, go and get I think Stas was at a strip club that night. <laughs> yeah, she was. Like, <laughs> yeah. She, she, she was in out. Atlanta with Tiffany. So said, fuck it. Let's get this over with. So we did like two dudes, that night. Magic Mike. Shit. I, I was probably bored as fuck sitting there. Yeah, I don't know what you were doing. I think he texted you and you're like, you never got back. You're like, well, that's Zach. Must be working. It was like one in the morning. Me and Josh were watching some red letter media. It was one in the morning. Yeah. Then I was probably asleep. We were watching some red light. If I media. wasn't hanging out with somebody, I was probably asleep. And if I wasn't here, I wasn't hanging out with anybody. <laughs> and yeah. And so we just did that on the fly because, you know, we hadn't done a first listen in so many years because of the way we were doing them. YouTube kept giving us shit. And I said, you know, you know I've had a lot of people on this show think, you motherfuckers ramble on way too often. We, we do. do ramble we on. do. But it's because these two are drunk. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something it. right now. It's fun. I, I, love I, 
I strive. This is high hopes, people, but I strive. My biggest online. Enjoy your fucking orgy! No shave ember. My biggest online influences as far as what this channel strives to be <laughs> is the cinemasnob.com and cinemasker.com. Those are cool things. Oh, you need to check out uh, Wine About It. Oh, let me see your letter. Uh, I'll have to definitely check. You'll, you'll love it. It's a guy who drinks wine at work and whines about things. Oh, there you go. Wine about it. It sounds like my thing, like my, my drunk kitchen. I fucking love her. Yeah, she's she's cool. I like her thing. Yeah. Uh, so, hush. That's why that was what me and, me and Tim were kind of like, kind of trying to do when we thought about doing Ow, a I'll cooking her. show my that weenus. had something to do with I hit my the weenus. movie. Even though it's kind of pretty much dinner in a movie, but this food has something to do with the movie. Yeah, I think it would be cool. Dinner that would be really cool. A Crunch movie of porno. review and a homemade recipe for some type of food that meets the movie. And Tim was going to be called the old fart. That would have been cool. The, the His name was going to Avery would have said, kiss the fart. Yes. That would have been cool. So, back to my original point. I love you guys for watching. I'm drunk as fuck. So this is coming from the heart. I am a very shy and introverted person. Kinsey, give me buddy. I have to drink to let things come out for the most part. Because America. America. And, 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 oh, There you go. He's got stuck in a loop. Janai. 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 One's a retard and the other's a whore. Janai. All right, you guys. I appreciate you guys for watching and subscribing and shit. But my original point when I went on this ramble, we are going to have the very first Monster from the Studio Christmas episode. I normally end the season at Halloween. But this year, because I've been so fucking shitty to you guys. I mean, yeah, really like the Santa last Claus, episode man. was in March. You should dress like Santa we, we really did do like a season this, this year. We really we, did. We had was three like the last episodes. Year's, last year was the mid-season finale. We had know, the beginning three of this, episodes the beginning, this whole year. The beginning year. of this year was the, the four. mid-season finale. Four, if you count my crossover with uh, Magic Steve. The bad that, that really Magic doesn't Steve. count because it's not Monster from the studio. What was Monster in his studio? It was, but it wasn't an episode. It was a crossover. We should do and Monster you, in the you Kitchen didn't even for upload it to your fucking page. We really should. We should That'd do a live like, video. I'll just put a camera on the cooking page. shit and they talk shit. Now, like, why did you not upload it to your page? What? That video. It's on. Oh, here. that's Steve's video. And? I don't have the file. Ask for the file. <laughs> I should. I'd be like, I mean, be Steve. like, I was on your video. Put me in the fucking, like, why? Why not? Excuse me. I feel I'd rather him get the views, man. He came up with the idea. He wrote the script. He did all the work. I mean, that's work. cool. The hardest thing I did was nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, people. You're going to get the very first Christmas Monster from the Studio, and we're going to have a couple Christmas, maybe one Christmas-themed uh, speaker brains retrospective for TSO. And but I don't even I don't even really see the point in that because you already gave your rating on those albums right here. Well, I didn't talk about the. Albums. It doesn't matter. Why are we gonna uh, sit there and talk about it for a fucking hour and a half? Maybe to we two hours. About Christmas movies. Well, you already gave your review on those albums. Uh, like you just two. gave your review like 15 minutes ago on each individual album and where they stand up and where they ranked in your mind. But I didn't and you're talk, gonna sit about, here and talk about. Um, Okay. Uh, okay, I want to put a fucking album out or a video out because Christmas. We'll do something at Christmas. We are, and we will see you guys next time. Peace. Eagles of Death Metal. <laughs> Prayers for Paris. Because terrorism. Hilton. No, see, that's what you said. Because we got to do Eagles of Death Metal because terrorism. Check out this song, Charles. When you go up and turn it up. Right. This song is fucking awesome. I'm gonna try to turn this thing off, man. God. Damn. I don't know if I can. Oh my god. <laughs>
Gummy baby beer, sending vagina pigs. Gummy baby beer, sending vagina pigs.